at the heart of life, all over the world. It's part of our cultural heritage, and every country has its own lively and unique bakery culture that gets passed down from generation to generation. Supporting and sharing bakery cultures worldwide. That's Bridor's mission. Bridor, share the bakery cultures of the world. We know what you're made of. The passion that drives you. We love your creativity, energy, taste, commitment, and teamwork. We're back together. And San Pellegrino is honored to stand by you. Wherever you are now, wherever your journey takes you, always supporting your talent. San Pellegrino supports restaurants. Together for almost a century, together with cocoa producers, artisans, and all chocolate lovers, we have been moving the needle for a fair and sustainable industry and for creative and responsible gastronomy. Beyond words, we believe in actions. 100% of Valrona's cocoa can be traced back to the producers. As a certified B Corps, we are committed to improving every day. We accompany artisans of good taste in creating works of art with the most beautiful material and to be actors in the sustainable and committed gastronomy of tomorrow. It's okay. I'm gonna be with you. Together, good becomes it's okay. better. Ce qui nous anime, nous les chefs, c'est de progresser sans cesse pour viser le meilleur. Et ça, c'est un travail d'équipe. Depuis plus de 75 ans, Elevir Professionnel nous accompagne avec toute l'excellence de son savoir-faire crémier normand. Chaque jour, ils sont à nos côtés pour nous aider à transmettre notre passion et à faire vivre des émotions partout dans le monde. Alors ensemble, faisons rayonner l'excellence à la française.
This is this prestigious prize that one of the candidates will win today. The Bocus d'Or. Good morning, buenos dias, bonjour, good morning, hello and welcome to Bocus d'Or 2023. This is the second and the last day of this prestigious culinary competition taking place during Sierra Leone. I'm Tani Koenig, and it's my great pleasure to guide you again throughout uh, this day today here on the live stream for this Grande Finale taking place in Lyon, France. This year we have 24 teams traveling from all over the world uh, to come here to France to showcase their creativity. You can see the teams right uh, there, uh, the lists with the countdowns, how much time they have left for their creations. Now, all of the teams, they went through an odyssey of uh, competitions uh, in their respective nations and continents until they made it here to Lyon. And we have a few firsts. We have two countries this year that are competing for the very first time, New Zealand and Mauritius. Uh, New Zealand's team actually competed yesterday, but Mauritius is cooking in Kitchen 12 today. And all of the themes, uh, all of the teams, they need to prepare two uh, platers, one of them being called Feed the Kids, which is a dish including pumpkin. They need to create an appetizer, a main dish, and a dessert using pumpkin and an egg. Then we have the other, the one theme plater called monkfish, which of course includes monkfish and it's the return of the fish to the Bocus d'Or after a few years uh, having meat recipes. Now we are live streaming throughout the whole day except for a lunch break uh, here on this platform. And of course we take a closer look into the kitchens and then we sit down here in the studio with experts that put everything into perspective uh, during the tasting. So many exciting things that are happening today. We hope you stay with us. In the kitchen area, we have, of course, our Bocus d'Or veterans, Angela May and Vincent Fernio. Right now, Angela is uh, there. Good morning, Angela. How are you? Good morning, Tanya. I am feeling fantastic. Good morning, everyone that's watching at home. And, of course, good morning, everyone here at Syrah in Lyon. We are here on day two for the Bocus d'Or 2023. <laughs> It's going to be a fabulous day. It's a little quiet here in the kitchens. So some of the teams are already coming out of their kitchens and they're picking their fresh ingredients. So they're choosing from some of the squash that's available for them. And of course, we're also going to be looking at their theme on a platter, which is evolved around monkfish. And so they're choosing their monkfish and they have some scallops and mussels to choose from as well. So we're going to be seeing those right now in the kitchens. It's quiet because there's only three teams that have so far started working. 
So the first kitchen starts working at 8 a.m. And then each kitchen then after that, with kitchen number two following, starts 13 minutes after. That means that every single kitchen gets the exact same amount of time before they need to present to the judges. So this right now, what you're looking at is basically the calm before the storm. And we have 12 kitchens that are working today with 12 nations that are vying for the platform, the coveted three spots that are on the platform. And of course, yesterday we had the first 12 that were competing for day one. We saw some beautiful platters coming out and for the very first time in Baku's door history, we saw the Feed the Children plates. Those Feed the Children plates were very interesting because it composed of a starter, a main course, and a dessert. And that's kind of highlighting nutrition and using a product that you can find almost readily around the world, which is pumpkin and various types of pumpkin, which we know is a power nutrition horse. That's right, Antoine. We're really looking forward to today's uh, creations as the teams yesterday were already uh, so playful with their uh, dishes. Thank you very much, Angela. Now, we have a short uh, best of with all the best moments of the arrival of the teams as well as of uh, day one. So let's take a look at that. <laughs> And I'm now joined by Regis Marcon, president of the International Organizing Committee of the competition, as well as renowned French chef, of course. Bonjour, good morning, Regis. Um, so we already spoke yesterday. Uh, we have the uh, Feed the Kids theme. But for everyone joining today only, uh, can you talk us a little bit through what the idea was behind having a children's menu for the very first time in the history of Bocus d'Or? Uh, of course, uh, uh, since uh, the beginning of uh, Bocus d'Or in, in 1997, we, with the committee, we, we want to change each uh, competition for new, for imagination, to do some uh, theme different. Uh, you, you remember two, two years ago, we chose uh, a click and collect because we have a crisis and all the cookers uh, work like this. It's, uh, it was amazing, uh, I think, uh, remember all the dish for click and collect. And this year we, we chose uh, the Feed the Kids. For us, uh, it's very important uh, to focus about uh, children nutrition, the, the taste education also. Uh, it's a good message, I think, we pass with this uh, contest. Yeah, we right now see uh, the French team uh, working on their squash in the kitchen, on the pumpkin. Why did you pick a squash? Why pumpkin as a vegetable? Uh, for different reasons. Uh, no, it's funny, yeah. It's uh, really interesting. Uh, all the, the, the kinds are uh, different. Uh, you find squash, marrow in the world. It's, uh, you have to think about the candidate they can find. Uh, a products you can use uh, journal diarement, and it's important. Mm. So you have to make sure that uh, the ingredient is being found in uh, most of the places. There are a few countries that don't have squash. Mauritius, for instance, said they don't have squash. I think Australia also said that it was hard to get. Yeah. Um, but oh, yeah. yes, yeah. But so we were curious to see they had to be uh, creative with that. Anything else that you're looking forward to to the competition today? Yeah, but also it's important for the candidate to have a straight, uh, to, to guide for the imagination. You have a squash, of course, and for the main course, for the feed the kids, you have a eggs. Eggs, uh, it's big, uh, everybody, yeah. 
and the candidate can cook the eggs like he wants. Maybe uh, illusion uh, visual, why not? Uh, uh, you can uh, boil, you can fry, you have plenty of techniques. Uh, yesterday, you have seen some uh, preparation very interesting. Je disais que hier, euh, nous avons eu des préparations euh, très intéressantes avec ces cuissons euh, différentes de d'œufs, euh, les préparations avec toutes les courges. On, on en a eu d'ailleurs plein les yeux, mais en même temps plein les papilles. Et quand même, euh, the way it's important, it's about children. Your children, you have some children taste. It was uh, very uh, funny, yeah? So we saw France already started now. We saw some of the image. How is that process now going to um, unfold? The process for uh... mm -hmm. Oh, actually, we're now also joined by uh, David Tissot in the studio, uh, last edition's winner for France 2021. Bonjour. Alors, on a vu France a déjà démarré. Peut-être, David, comment est-ce que ça se va passer? Ah bah j'ai des frissons, <rire> là déjà. Euh, ouais, J'avais ma petite larme, <rire> parce que euh, bon, déjà c'était le même box, même heure, et euh, ouais. <rire> so, uh, Davy, I asked him, uh, France actually already started working in their kitchen, and I asked him, uh, how does he feel about it? And he said he already got some goosebumps because he was actually working in the exact same kitchen, starting at the exact same time. Peut-être, uh, tu peux dé décrire comment uh, se sont les candidates dans ces moments-là? Alors, ben, ce qui a été particulier, là, tout à l'heure, j'étais au box avant que ça démarre, et euh, moi, quand j'étais dans le box, j'ai pas vu tout ce qui se passait autour. Et euh, tout à l'heure, là, j'ai pu voir ce qui se passe autour. Euh, c'est waouh, wow, c'est impressionnant. Euh, Many ouais, people, yeah. hein? Many people around, yeah. Ouais, ouais, ouais puis c'est, on sent la tension. Et il faut arriver à gérer le stress uh, qui, qui, qui arrive. Ah, non, so, uh, Davy was at uh, the box right next to the kitchen uh, of France and actually could already sense the tension uh, there and you need to manage the stress. So, I'm curious to know how do you manage the stress? Comment est-ce que uh, on gère le stress et la tension? En fait, uh, c'est même pas de la, du stress, c'est arriver à dompter la peur. En fait, c'est uh, ne pas avoir peur. Une fois qu'on arrive à maîtriser cette peur, il euh, n'y a, a pas de stress, il y a de la concentration. Et c'est là où on arrive dans un... où on doit dérouler avec toute la plus grosse concentration qu'on puisse avoir. So it's not about managing stress, it's more making sure that uh, you get rid of the fear. Now, this is a historic moment as well for France because uh, it's the first time that they have a female candidate and uh, she's also the youngest candidate in the competition this year. Alors, c'est un moment historique aussi pour la France, la première fois. Yeah, yeah it's the first time for female is uh, at the final. You, you say it's, she's young. Hey, she's pretty smiled this morning. I see all the team. Uh, we expect it will be the nice for the, now, for the day. Yeah, we think so. So Regis, good uh, impression. Yeah, she's making a good impression there. A nice pirole. You can see her on the images. Uh, she was already there with a smile. Any advice for the candidates of today that you can give? Pass on. Yeah, it's uh, all the team. You have a coach, you know. Uh, it's uh, uh, Edouard Loubet, of course, and you all, all the team. Also, uh, Davy, uh, advice. Uh, it's it's really a, a team. It's important. You know about the stress before. Uh, the stress, uh, sure, but it's, it's all the preparation to go down a little the stress. Now the candidate is begin, but the, the more difficult is. Uh, 10 minutes before the competition, you have to to go to uh, to be alone in, in your head. Yeah, it's all concentration. Yeah, it's all the work, all the month uh, we work before. So you kind of need to also um, focus yourself, center yourself, yeah. uh, as there's a lot of uh, noise around it. How do you do that with so much noise, so much going around, that you don't get distracted? Euh, je, je vais répondre en français. Oui. 
En fait, et euh, ce qu'il faut comprendre, c'est que dans un box, c'est quatre personnes, mais il faut arriver à faire qu'une seule bulle. C'est pas quatre bulles séparées qui travaillent dans un coin, c'est vraiment euh, une unité à l'unisson. Et quand on arrive à faire ça, on, on, on arrive à gérer beaucoup, beaucoup de choses. Le travail, il est fait en amont et euh, on arrive du coup à se concentrer et à être focus sur l'objectif et à visualiser en fait... Euh, Monsieur Paul. Exactement. So, um, the question was, how do you make sure that you're focused and centered in that box while there's so much noise around, so much going on? And uh, Davy said that uh, it's, uh, of course, having a common goal because there's four people in the boxes, in the kitchens, and you all have to work for one goal. Not, it's not about doing your own thing for yourself. And interestingly, I also read about uh, the French a team that they made sure that they had uh, automatic in place so that mm. uh, they actually don't have to talk to each other just by their movements, uh, body language, they could know what the other candidates wanted. Mm. Is that also something that you've done? Like, pas parler beaucoup, mais de lire le mouvement du... En fait, on parle, on parle, on parle avec les yeux, on parle avec les mains. Quand on est vraiment dans cette bulle, il y a le, on a tellement passé de moments ensemble sur les entraînements ou sur les blancs que la communication elle est plus, on va dire, dans la gestuelle ou dans le regard. So, bah, it's an amont. It, it uh, you can uh, help yourself also with the sport, with the work in the nature. There are plenty of things we, we help. Yeah. So it's really about um, being able to read uh, your colleagues' body language, to talk uh, by looking at each other, talking with your hands, uh, because you've been training for such a long time together that you know your teammates. You're basically one. You're not four. You're one. Um, and Et moi, pardon, moi, sur l'entraînement, enfin, quand je me suis préparé, euh, j'ai fait des phases où euh, j'ai travaillé 5h30 sans marchandises, seulement avec des casseroles, un couteau. Et euh, alors au début, je tenais 20 minutes, je faisais toute la compétition 20 minutes, après une heure, jusqu'à arriver à 5h30 de compétition, sans marchandises, en faisant juste les gestes, un peu comme les pilotes de chasse ou euh, les skieurs, euh, Formule 1. Encore une fois, c'est de la visualisation mentale. Et euh, quand on arrive à, à ça, on, on est plus, beaucoup plus performant, en fait. So it's all about visualizing uh, that goal. Davy explaining uh, how he trained. Uh, he would do like a 20 minutes of uh, competition for himself and then extend to the, at the end uh, doing five hours just with his pots and his knives and all that. And visualizing uh, this uh, Paul Bocuse uh, here. Uh, door. Um, that is uh, the goal. You need to have a focus just like in Formula One, like in other sports, it's exactly the same thing. Anything else to add? Yes, uh, for, the, for the team, it's a good experience. And for me, uh, I, I have a view for the school because all the young generation today uh, see the book is door. It's important to, to go well. When I see uh, before uh, in the morning at five o'clock, uh, Anaïs uh, and, his, and his, uh, her team, I am very enjoy because uh, she's pretty, smile. It's important to, to show this way of uh, competition. It's not uh, too much hard all the time, too much hard. Maybe uh, this view uh, of the public, of the young generation is not the best. The smile is uh, uh, organization, uh, all the all the work before, uh, after the image, the view for the public. C'est important. J'étais avec uh, Anaïs ce matin à 5 h midi matin et quand ils sont arrivés avec toute l'équipe, de les voir uh, sourire, uh, plaisanter, uh, même s'il y avait de la pression. C'est cette image là que l'on veut passer aux, aux jeunes générations, aux écoles, de montrer que. Ce métier de la cuisine, ce n'est pas systématiquement que de la compétition, que de, que de l'énergie, forcément, mais que de la souffrance. Et ce ne l'est pas, en fait. Et c'est toute la préparation dont Davy parle avant qui fait que, voilà, on est prêt et on, on a les éléments positifs pour démarrer. 
So uh, even though the pressure is high and everything, it's not just competition, it's, it should be also passion and fun as well. Uh, so doing it with a smile as nice uh, was doing this morning already, even though it's a competition day, it's all about the attitude as well. Merci beaucoup, David Merci. Tissot and Regis Marcon. We'll see each other later on for the tasting. Uh, you'll be joining me in the studio. Bon appétit. Uh, bon appétit, exactement. Um, so now let's present to you all of the teams, all of the candidates competing today. And we start with Denmark. Denmark uh, is here for its 19th time and was on the podium already for seven times. <laughs> So let's take a closer look at how they present themselves in their video. The Danish team now there in their kitchen, kitchen number one, uh, working. The candidate is uh, Brian Mark Hansen. He's one of the most prominent culinary artists in Denmark and in Europe. He has one Michelin star attached to his name and won the Bokus d'Or Europe in 2022. So, of course, he is aiming at going at least on the podium today. Now, he's known for using seasonal produce only. And you see there his comments as well. The team has been training five days a week in a dedicated training center in Copenhagen. Now, Brian Mark Hansen takes a run. You see him there. He takes a run every morning before training to keep his mind in the right place. So what we we're talking about before, the way... Uh, that you need also to be fit uh, mentally and physically. Uh, currently, he's obsessed with old school cooking. So let's see if this is what he's going to be doing today. We'll find out in the recipe video. We are taking uh, it all into Hans Christian Andersen's uh, 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 histories. And then we made it uh, like the theme of the plat three platters. Uh, the first course was uh, inspired from the whole world and uh, it called hidden but not forgotten. That's one of his themes. And then when you're going to eat and, and dig inside the, the dish, you, you're going to taste a different uh, kind of flavor every time. Uh, the Platzer theme is the coast of Denmark. Uh, I was very inspired uh, by the coast. I almost live there all around the year. And uh, if you look just between the water into the sand at the coast, you got some ripples. And that was my idea for the platter all around. And then we were building uh, the monkfish up so you can see that as a theater almost. So that's the first violin on our platter, it's the monkfish. And uh, then we made some Danish garnishes all around with uh, uh, horseradish, some apples and some celery, which is very Danish. Uh, and then we made some Danish mushrooms, we call it a royale because it's so delicious uh, and tasteful. So this is the recipe of the Danish team, a very strong team. Uh, Angela, you must be there in front of Kitchen One. What uh, have you got? Yes, good morning. Wow, so here we are, kitchen number one. It is about, oh, it's almost nine o'clock. So this team has been working for about 55 minutes so far this morning. I have coach for Team Denmark here. 
And now, you know, we're just going to say a few words and you're going to walk us through what yeah. the team is going to be doing today and what to expect. But seriously, wow, Denmark has some real big history here at the Bakuz door. It's one of the only nations that has one candidate that has collected a bronze, a silver, and a gold. And so, of course, those big shoes to fill is Rasmus Kofed, where he like left the Bakuz door to go and open his own restaurant and then came back when he finally competed and won the gold. So really the history that's here in front of kitchen number one is magnificent. Coach, tell me, what can we expect this year from Denmark? Well, uh, first of all, we always try to do our best. Uh, we have been uh, working hard, very hard, and we know uh, we have some big uh, shoes to fill. So uh, we just came down here and tried to do our very, 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 very best. <laughs> Four varies. Yeah. <laughs> Indeed. So now, what are we going to be seeing from your kitchen? What are some of the inspirations that your team has drawn from in order to come here and produce for us the Feed the Children dish and the monkfish on a platter? Uh, first of all, the Feed the Kids. Uh, that's a very exciting theme. Uh, Luckily, uh, both uh, me and Brian, we have uh, smaller kids, so we know what to expect. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's interesting. Uh, we'll try to use some, get some inspiration from uh, Hans Christian Andersen. Uh, oh, that's cute. That's, that's a very, very cute. Uh, known author from yes. Denmark, so uh -huh. we might, might as well use that. And uh, he has some uh, very famous fairy tales, so we're going to see that on the platter. On that the plates, sorry. On the plates, yeah. yeah. Okay, and I see this morning, uh, Vincent, good morning. Come on over. You're here with us at kitchen number one. Am I accepted here? <laughs> <laughs> Hello, coach. Hello. <laughs> it's good to see you. Uh, I've seen you, all the Danish team going around Norwegians, going around <laughs> Swedish. Is that a, it seems that there's a real solidarity between the Scandic nations. Yeah, I think. Uh, of, of course, you're of, one of, of against course, the other. Uh, we're against each other, <laughs> but uh, we might as well uh, get the best out of it mm -hmm. uh, and learn from each other. Mm. That's what we're doing, so we can be even better. Part of your strength. <laughs> <laughs> we <laughs> hope so. We saw some super beautiful platters yesterday in this same kitchen that you're in. Norway was yeah. teeing off for day one, yeah, yeah. and that was a beautiful I hope, uh, platter. I hope good luck in it. <laughs> Denmark is already in the history of the book is though, so uh, uh, we, yes. we hope the best it's for deep you. In history. Thank you. Thank you very much. Oh, come on, Kenneth. No, he, 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 you know what? Kenneth is in the back and he does like, yes, yeah, you say that, but you don't think a word of what you say. Is that what you thought, Kenneth? No, uh, <laughs> but um, of course uh, we know our legacy and uh, it's a tough competition, as everybody knows, so it's, um, it's about uh, trying to just do a nice job again today and uh, respect uh, may the best man win, and uh, we hope for that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very diplomatic mm -hmm. there. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's trying to, <laughs> but uh, you can feel the, the Danish heart. <laughs> okay, well, we see that in this dance, you guys are going to have a lot of supporters later, so we're going to be looking forward to a very, very noisy afternoon. The morning's just getting started, so let's ease into it. Thank you so much, Denmark. Good luck. You're welcome. Thanks. Can I just use this for a moment? Yes, that was one hour. <laughs> Thank you very much. Well, big shoes to fill for sure with Denmark and Erasmus winning all of these trophies. He is probably coming here to the studio later on, so we're going to chat with him. And But now over to Hungary, who is here for the sixth time at Bokus Dor. Let's launch their video portrait. The place where I grew up, it ain't even marked in a bigger map. I ate hot dogs and coke or whatever, but my grandma made. At the school cafeteria, we had pork stew and makos guba. At home, everyone had the best receipt for these. I don't remember the first time I took a chef's knife in my hands, but once I did, I never let it again. We Hungarians are fond of mangalitsa, hot red pepper, and big balls of soup. As for me, when I was young, I would go for anything that looked nearly edible and didn't move. I'd go for the ones that moved too. Me as well. 
We honor our ancestor staples, the fine wines of Tokai, Gundel pancakes, fisherman soup of Baja, Hungarian goulash, Dobostort, or Debrecen sausages. We are glad to learn from our predecessors. We take advice from the old masters, and we are grateful to all who help us live our dreams. Let us show you what we are made of. We are the Hungarian team. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, that's the Hungarian team with their candidate Benz Dalnoki as the candidate. He's an expert in the traditional cuisine of his country, a sous chef at the two, -star Mich two Michelin star restaurant stand in Budapest. He won the Hungarian selection of Bokus Dor by combining Hungarian heritage and professional techniques of high gastronomy. And his current obsession is sour dough bread, dough bread, exactly. So let's take a look at the recipe of the Hungarian team. Uh, in the Feed the Kids menu, our first dish is eat your vegetables. The second dish, the main course, it's a crispy pumpkin Halloween. And the third dish is named on the dessert. It is uh, one apple a day, keeps the doctor away. We called it uh, to Monkfish Budapest uh, with Hungarian spices and uh, beetroot in the garnishes, uh, raw pickled vegetables. Uh, and on the ragu, it's a Hungarian feast. Uh, we call it uh, with a muscle filled tortellini. So, this is the Hungarian team uh, there. Angela, Vincent, uh, who have you got with you? Right now, I'm actually without anyone. I was just speaking to Coach, and he mentioned right now it's rush hour for the team. So I'm going to grab him in a minute. But I just wanted to show you as I was looking at the menu booklet that they brought over, how beautiful is this? Wow. So Team Hungry, their theme is powered by nature. And in their booklet, it was mentioning a bit that children often eat with their memories. And so they're going to be using some ingredients that they think are reminiscent of childhood memories. Um, Coach is just fixing up uh, the, the assistant here. She seems to have a small a little bit of a wound. Coach, come on over anytime you have a moment of free time. I know you're in rush hour. We would like to speak to you so we can catch you on camera. Wait. Mentioning so, uh, childhood memories, it's funny yes. that Ben's childhood memories are hot dogs and Coca-Cola. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, let's omit that from our memories and we <laughs> hope that children are going to be drinking less and less of that kind of stuff. Um, but, uh, you know, hot dogs could also be formed out of very nice meats and products and then therefore, you know, you could look towards having things that are healthier but he's still served with bread and a bun. Absolutely. And what are you seeing? What exactly are they preparing? What are they working on? Yes, that is a good question. So even though it's rush hour, the team is very, very calm and collected. Okay, Coach is now has his hands behind his back. He's a little bit more calm right now. Let me get you a microphone. <laughs> okay, give us, give us 20 seconds. Tell us, what can we expect from your team today? Mm, what, what we do today? Mm, yes, okay. what we're going to be looking uh, at today. Now, I think this is the, uh, the toughest hour now, mm -hmm. because the first uh, two hours is really, really important to the mm -hmm. team, because we have to push it, you know. Mm -hmm. And now we are in the middle of the mise en place, of course. Yeah, yeah. We are really happy with the uh, Anais, mm -hmm. uh, the second coming, because uh, she is really, really... Uh, uh, High-qualified uh, chefs, young chefs. That's fantastic. Okay, so coach is just saying that the first two hours for their team are the most important, and so that's why he believes that it's rush hour, and he really wants to take this time in order to make sure that the team is working like a well-oiled machine. He's also mentioned that their second commie, which is helping out in the kitchen, has been fantastic, and that they're really working well together. And so now remember that these, the two people from Team Hungary have been working together and then now they have an assistant in the team that will be working as a pair of small hands through the day. 
Okay, good. Well, thank you very much then for taking uh, his time or your time, uh, Coach Tamas, as if the two uh, first uh, hours are the most important for them. Thank you very much, Angela. And we go on to with Colombia, their second participation in the finale here at Pocus Dor, Colombia in the house per la segunda vez. So let's take a look at their video. Sorriso, there's another big smile uh, by the candidate of Colombia, Carlos Pajaro is his uh, name. You see him right uh, there. His passion for food comes from cooking alongside his grandmother from a very young age on. And he says that he loved seeing her bringing joy to the family through her food. Now, Carlos studied at Instituto Mariano Moreno in Colombia and then obtained a scholarship to train at the Institute Paul Bocuse in Lyon. Now back in his country, he's one of Colombia's most important entrepreneurs with an app-only restaurant business. So being very innovative there. This is the Colombian team. Now let's take a look at what they are going to prepare for us today. Uh, the food menu is inspired in my grandmother. Y the, the first, the gazpacho, the gazpacho with poti marron is a soup Colombian eh, with eh, cocoa milk, eh, arepa. Arepa is eh, very traditional in, in Colombia. Um, rice with milk is super special dessert in Colombia. The plato is part in Gabriel Garcia Marquez, the yellow butterfly, um, biodiversity in Colombia. The Colombian uh, have a different uh, uh, regions, uh, Andina, uh, Pacific, Amazon, uh, Caribe, super, super special. So this, the recipe that by the Colombian uh, team, we see uh, Carlos there working on their first uh, recipe. Angela, what yes. have you got? Thanks, Tanya. I'm in front of kitchen number three. The team is working away. And so they do have a bit of a mousseline here out in the front, which I am assuming this is gonna be part of their monkfish dish. I have the president of the jury from Colombia. Come on over, Dominique. Good morning. Come, come walk us through a few things. Uh, so now, Colombia, just hold on one moment because there's been some loud like air horns in the stadium over here. Are these your supporters up there? No, supporters are just in front of us, Hi. just here with the flags. Oh, just down here. Okay. <laughs> I see this one gentleman down here. Exactly. Oh, giving air hearts. Okay. So now, what are we going to see from the kitchen, kitchen number three for Team Colombia today? From Team Colombia, we will see all the biodiversity we can find in Colombia. Colombia is a it's a country on the world with the biggest biodiversity on the world. Oh, the biggest university in the world. Biodiversity, exactly, because we have a product we can grow at sea level until 4,000 uh, 4, meters. So we have 4,000 uh, 4, meters. So we have a lot of product, and we have a lot of uh, vegetable and fruits. 
maybe Colombia is a, it's a country with the uh, highest uh, variety of fruits. Oh, so, that's super interesting. You said biodiversity. Biodiversity. What, what kind of fruit that you think that you're bringing that I wouldn't be so familiar with? We will have uh, tomato trees. Tomato trees. Tomato. Tomato oh. trees. Okay. It's like a tomato, uh -huh. but it grows on a tree. And it's a fruit. It's a little bit sweet, but it's uh, like uh, it's a tomato. And is it normally eaten cooked or normally eaten raw? You can do both. You can cook it or you can eat it like that, raw. And so the tomato tree, it doesn't die off. It continues to fruit yes, year exactly. after year. Oh, very interesting. And is the t taste like a tomato? Is that why it's called tomato? No, or? it's like a tomato, but a little bit more sweetie. Mm, fascinated to see it. Exactly. What, what else is there that's no. from the cu culture that we maybe don't know? No, we bring uh, tukupi. Tukupi is something made by the um, Indian people in uh, Amazonia. OK. And it's done with um, manioc, and it's extraction of manioc. And this uh, this product, it has the particularity as is a is a poison, mm -hmm. poison, and they use it for to kill the the game. But they have as well a technique to clean to to clean everything, and they do a, a juice. And they use it on the traditional uh, cuisine for to do a stock, soup, or something like that. Fascinating. And with the juice, they do the tukupi, and as well, they do the tapioca. With the liquid, they do the tukupi, and when they will reduce it, they will do the tapioca. And is that going to be in the feed the children or it's in the fish platter? In the fish platter, will okay. be the sauce. Okay, so if you guys heard that correctly, that sometimes the Aztec people used to use this particular juice yes. to kill game, so exactly. on like a tip of an no, arrow, exactly. but In when Amazon. it's cleaned properly, it can be used, and you won't murder anyone today. No, definitely okay. not. <laughs> okay, so today's not a day for murder. Okay, so thank you so much, thank Team Columbia. We're looking forward to it. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Angela. Team Colombia there. Now, I'm going to be joined by representatives of our partner Metro in a bit, but first let's take a look at who Metro is. So this our partner Metro there. I'm now joined by Bertrand Muller, market manager, uh, fruit and vegetable at Metro, and Laurent Reno, producer of Vert Valley. Um, so on a vu qu'est-ce que vous faites, mais peut-être quelques mots sur Metro. Bonjour Tania, Bonjour. merci pour l'invitation. Euh, donc nous sommes ici aujourd'hui tous les deux avec euh, Laurent, qui est un partenaire depuis plus de 15 ans qui nous produit euh, une sélection de, de courges. Il a une très large gamme de courges. Ce produit a été retenu par le jury cette année du Bocuse d'or euh, afin d'intégrer euh, les, les, les préparations. Donc notre travail au quotidien euh, repose notamment sur euh, le, le, sour, le, le sourcing de producteurs qui ont un niveau de qualité euh, qui permettant à nos restaurateurs de magnifier leur repas. 
Merci beaucoup. So um, Bertrand explaining that he, they are here with their partner Laurent right next to him who has been a partner for about 15 years and he is a pumpkin, a squash producer and his products were chosen by the jury for today's contest. You can see the squash being prepared right there. So the work of Metro, the daily work, is sourcing the best producers uh, of high quality so that they can um, have the best products for the gastronomic uh, sector, for the restaurants, etc. Alors, on a vu uh, le, la courge être qui est un um, ingrédient principal ici dans le concours que vous les, uh, avez fourni. Um, Est-ce que vous pouvez parler? peu plus des produits sélectionnés. Alors nous avons dix variétés de courges différentes qui vont des plus connues comme le butternut à la corne qui est une, une courge en forme de, de gland qui est euh, numéro un aux états unis je crois Laurent c'est ça, et, ça. Et, et en passant par le blue ballet donc il y a une multitude de couleurs différentes et de saveur et aussi de texture. Le butternut, par exemple, est un produit euh, qui a une texture un petit peu comme le beurre, très doux. Et je laisse Laurent euh, euh, confirmer ou compléter. Euh... Bonjour Tania, oui, c'est tout à fait vrai. Disons, nous avons une très très grande palette de goût, de texture. Et donc, euh, on parlait de la butternut qui, bon, sa, sa douceur... Euh, extraordinaire, avec un grand, une grande palette d'utilisation. Et puis après, vous avez les potimarrons, vous avez les musquets, vous avez... On prendrait trop de temps pour parler de tous ces produits. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, they were just explaining that they have about 10 types of squash here at this contest today. So they're very like, different types and each known for its specialities, like the butternut for being soft, uh, but we would need so much time to talk through all of the types of squash. Uh, Peut-être uh, on peut parler sur uh, l'environnement, parce que ça c'est aussi um, une topic sérieux pour vous. Quels sont les enjeux actuels environnementaux qui menacent uh, l'exploitation des légumes ou des fruits? Eh bien, c'est très important que vous souleviez ce sujet. Euh, les années à venir vont être difficiles et l'environnement mais le changement climatique vont aussi euh, poser beaucoup de problèmes ça va être euh, l'agriculture va être euh, une des premières victimes euh, des changements climatiques et donc il va falloir nourrir aussi la planète aussi dans les meilleures conditions possibles et donc euh, nous travaillons déjà tous nos produits en agroécologie donc sans pesticides de synthèse donc on allie aussi bien donc, euh, du travail manuel pour arracher l'air, mais euh, des décoctions de plantes, euh, des, des huiles essentielles, des minéraux, micro-minéraux, micro donc pour euh, les maladies. Et nous mettons des fleurs dans nos cultures pour euh, donc accueillir toute une multitude d'insectes auxiliaires et d'insectes pollinisateurs, parce que ça, c'est aussi un des grands enjeux de l'avenir. Et donc, de façon à, à pouvoir gérer au mieux, on recrée notre micro, notre micro système. Voilà. Et je précise que, que Laurent est donc certifié HBE, qui est un label officiel euh, de l'État français, haute valeur environnementale. So uh, we're talking about sustainability, the climate change. Uh, Laurent was saying that climate change is a hot topic when it comes uh, to their uh, field, of course, because they depend on it. Uh, the last few years were also uh, not so easy. Sometimes uh, water irregularities, etc. Uh, what they do is they don't work with any pesticides. They've been certified here in uh, France also uh, for their efforts in this regard. So it's definitely a very important topic for them. Now, merci beaucoup, uh, Laurent et Bertrand, pour être ici et d'être partenaires de Bocuso. Merci, merci beaucoup. Bonne journée. Merci, Tania. Et bonne journée, exactement. And I'm going to be joined by our other partner, San Pellegrino, right in a few seconds. We know what you're made of, the passion that drives you, 
We love your creativity, energy, taste, commitment, and teamwork. We're back together. And San Pellegrino is honored to stand by you. So wherever you are now, wherever your journey takes you, always supporting your talent. San Pellegrino supports restaurants. And I'm now joined by Frank E. Isayan. He's the sale manager at Nestlé Waters of France. Bonjour. Bonjour. Ça va? Ça va très bien. Super. Alors, vous avez une part partnership historique avec le Bocus d'Or. Pourquoi? Pourquoi? Alors, comme vous dites, c'est historique puisque ce partenariat date de 1987. Vous voyez qu'on est... est partenaire depuis le départ. Pourquoi? Parce qu'en fait, Nestlé Waters, ça a est très investi dans le monde de la gastronomie avec Vitel bien évidemment et avec San Pellegrino et Aquapana donc il nous paraissait naturel d'accompagner cet événement qui est mondial avec des marques mondiales et donc on soutient le Bocus d'or dans toutes les régions du monde on soutient les sélections avec San Pellegrino et bien évidemment la finale ici à Lyon tous les deux ans Well, he was uh, mentoring Frank that, of course, it's an historic partnership because they've been here from the very beginning on together, a partner of Bocus Door, and they also uh, are a partner of all the national, the, the continental selections uh, with uh, San Pellegrino. So it makes sense to be here at the finals, of course. Et quelle est l'importance de l'eau dans la gastronomie? Alors, l'eau, ça accompagne bien évidemment tous les repas. C'est finalement un élément incontournable du repas et il y a un gros travail qui est fait. Donc on fait un gros travail avec les sommeliers historiquement puisque ce sont des produits qui ont un vrai terroir. Une eau minérale, c'est un terroir avant tout. Et, et donc ça accompagne bien évidemment les plats et également les vins. Mais également, il y a de plus en plus de chefs, dont des vitisseaux, qui cuisinent avec certaines, certaines eaux minérales pour ce qu'elles apportent en termes de sel minéraux justement et qui leur permettent aussi d'aller chercher des saveurs pour faire la cuisine. Donc euh, c'est donc un élément pour faire la cuisine et bien évidemment un élément pour accompagner le repas puisque, comme on dit, un verre d'eau, un verre de vin, comme ça on, on arrive à passer des déjeuners en s'hydratant, en profitant de l'alcool et bien évidemment en profitant également de ce qu'on qu mange. So I asked him about the importance of water in gastronomy and he said, of course, water goes with all of the dishes. It is also a good pairing with wine, especially mineral water. It depends on what minerals they have. There are even chefs that cook with mineral water if they want certain flavors to come out of these minerals. So if you're eating, having a glass of wine, of course, you need a glass of water as well. Alors, l'année passée, vous avez euh, commencé une partnership avec euh, David Tisso qui a gagné Bocus d'Or en 2021. Quoi est-ce que vous avez fait ensemble Alors, il y a quelques années qu'on avait initié des éditions limitées Vitel. Donc, on a eu des partenariats avec de nombreux chefs. On a eu Michel Roth, on a eu Christian Lesquer, on a eu Alain Passard, on a eu Philippe Mille. Qui avait, été, qui avait brillamment fait le concours il y a quelques années. Et donc cette année, on a une édition limitée que je vais pouvoir montrer là, qui est une édition limitée donc sur nos trois formats d'eau de table, avec Guy Tissot, le Bocus d'or, et on a 6 millions de bouteilles qui vont porter donc, cette étiquette Guy Tissot. Et cette bouteille sera présente sur toutes les tables de France, puisque pendant quatre mois, on arrête l'édition standard et on expédie uniquement l'édition limitée. Donc on va avoir des vitisseaux qui vont être présents sur toutes les tables de tous les restaurants de France pendant quatre mois. Donc voilà, donc ça, ça ancre encore plus l'histoire de Nestlé Waters avec le Bocus d'or et des vies. So there's a partnership between uh, Vite Waters and uh, David Tissot, the last edition's winner of Bocus Door. They did this special bottle that you can see right now uh, on the screen with David Tissot on it. Uh, it's going to be uh, out on the French uh, table in the restaurants for four months. They have six million bottles, yes. limited edition uh, there that will be in the restaurants in France for four months. Très intéressant. Merci beaucoup, Franck. Euh, Merci. Et au aussi d'être partenaire ici du concours. Merci beaucoup. Bonne journée. Bonne journée à vous aussi.
And with that, uh, we were just talking about uh, France. Uh, we continue with presenting you the French uh, team. It's their 16th time here at the Bocchus d'Or, of course, in their native country. La France in the house. the French team and they're standing on shoulders of giants. The French fans, let me present you to the candidate. We already heard it. She is the youngest and the only female candidate in this year's Bocuse d'Or. Nice Pirolet. She graduated from the Institute Paul Bocuse in 2017. And she is, of course, aware that she is the youngest candidate in the competition and that she doesn't have the same experience as uh, others may be that, but she will try to bring her personal touch to the competition. It's the first time for her to work with Monkfish, so it's a real challenge for her. The team has been training every day and we also discussed that before, they learned how to trust each other 100%. And Naïs and the team, they love listening to music while working because they think it's like um, part, which cooking is like, you, you need to have certain rhythm. She also works out on a regular basis to have the right posture, mobility, and also the muscles she needs. This, the French team, let's now take a look at their recipe. In our Fit the Kids menu, we try to uh, dip the, the jury into his childhood. So we try to be fun, but to keep the taste real and to put um, in front the pumpkin. That was the principal subject. So we work on a croissant to dip and to eat just with finger for the starter. And uh, for the main dish, it's just fun and uh, simplicity. And the dessert is... Uh, you can stop it, you just eat it and you want to go back. So I hope you enjoyed. The platter thing with the monkfish was quite a challenge, but uh, I, tr I uh, tried to go into my roots and to find the good vegetables to put in, a, in front the monkfish taste. So we played with some mushrooms, some cabbage, some pumpkin too, by, by chance. And uh, for the ragu, we work on the Pueblon de la Planese, a magical uh, legume that uh, we wanted to put in front and to, to show for this competition. And I believe Vincent is right there now. Vincent. Vincent. Oui, Tania. Alors, euh, j'espère que vous ne m'en voudrez pas, mais on va le faire en français. Ah, cette interview, cette interview et cette présentation de l'équipe de France. Je ne sais pas pourquoi, mais il m'a semblé qu'il y avait un tout petit peu de monde hein, euh, autour du, du stand de Naïs Pirolet. Euh, et je suis avec euh, le coach euh, de cette équipe, euh, c'est Édouard Loubet. Bonjour Édouard. Bonjour. Euh, Édouard Loubet qui a, mis ses, qui a chaussé ses lunettes. Ça c'est pour les timers, hein, c'est ça, parce qu'il y a un nombre de timers incroyable. Et c'est aussi pour toutes les petites lignes à lire là. <rire> C'est ça, et c'est pour les vapeurs qui sortent de la cocotte pour ne pas les prendre dans les yeux, hein, pour ne pas ça perdre. Fume. Alors, Edouard, euh, c'est incroyable parce que on voit tout le, tout le travail qui se met en place, euh, répété de nombreuses fois. Euh, 
à quoi ça sert un coach en fait C'est le, c'est à la fois celui qui tient euh, le, le time, enfin le, le temps, euh, le temps de, de confection de, de la recette. C'est quelqu'un qui est tout le temps dans le, dans le, sur la, sur la tablette, dans les livres. C'est donc euh, un peu le l'horloge. Avant, il y avait bien avant la relation, le temps passé et se préparer, ce qui était le plus important. Et puis aujourd'hui, eh bien, essayer de ne pas s'égarer dans nos chronos et dans toutes les recettes. Mmh. Donc euh, suivre ce qui se passe, rassurer, conseiller et Mais, admirer. Ah oui, aussi, hein, c'est la, la, apporter un peu de tempérance hein, dans, dans cette folie. D'ailleurs, euh, on se posait la question euh, avec certains des, des chefs qui sont autour. Euh, on sait que généralement, les, les, les chefs s'entraînent. Euh, avec de la musique, avec euh, du bruit, avec parfois même euh, des bandes de son qui viennent du, du concours, du Bocus d'or. Euh, qu'en est-il de, au moment où on se retrouve devant cette foule, avec le public, euh, l'attention apportée par tous les journalistes, les photographes autour Ça doit être super impressionnant ou est-ce qu'elle est dans une bulle, Naïs On est dans une bulle tous les quatre, mais on s'est entraîné avec du bruit et des belles musiques et on est content d'avoir euh, la France qui nous supporte, là, on entend ça. Bon, comment va-t-elle elle va très très bien. Ouais, elle est, elle est focus, hein, on le voit bien. Euh, on a l'impression qu'elle, ne, qu'elle n'entend pas ce qui se passe autour. Et c'est très bien comme ça d'ailleurs. Euh, combien de temps d'entraînement est-ce que vous avez fait avec, euh, avec Naïs combien de, combien de séances pour en arriver là aujourd'hui Eh bien, euh, elle a déjà euh, bien 8 ans de travail. Donc, euh, <rire> ouais, ouais. 8 ans plus ce qu'on a rajouté pour l'entraînement. Et on va dire que ces quatre derniers mois étaient assez intenses. Et puis, elle avait un long entraînement auparavant avec Davy. Donc, euh, elle est prête. On est à Lyon. Il y a un Lyon sous le capot. Il ben, y, y a un Davy sous le capot qui est là aussi. Euh, euh, viens nous rejoindre, Davy. Euh, merci. On va laisser Edouard retourner à, ses, à sa tablette parce qu'il y en a des choses à vérifier. Alors, je suis avec euh, Davy Tissot. Euh, qui a encore euh, pour quelques heures la statuette euh, bien à lui et à lui tout seul de ce bocus d'or. Mais Davy, on sent dans, dans le regard euh, déjà une, une transmission. Euh, lorsqu'on vous voit regarder euh, Naïs, qui a été votre commis, euh, travailler ici euh, à la place que vous teniez euh, il y a un an et demi, il eh ben, y, a, y a comme euh, l'histoire qui s'écrit là devant ce stand. Non, on a un devoir de transmettre les choses, de partager, euh, partager euh, notre expérience qu'on a pu vivre. Euh, après, euh, au quotidien, c'est jamais simple, mais euh, il faut le faire. Ça fait partie des choses, comme elle, elle devra le faire après, euh, avec le prochain euh, Français ou Française. Davy, euh, je, je, je te voyais regarder Naïs travailler. Quand tu étais dans le concours, est-ce que tu as le temps de voir ce que fait en fait ton, ton, ton second, ton commis, ta commise oui, euh, est-ce, que tu, est-ce que tu retrouves un peu de, de ce que tu as vécu il y a un an et demi lorsque tu la vois cuisiner la, la, chose, la chose qu'on ne voit pas, c'est euh, bah, tout, ce qui se passe, tout ce qui se passe autour. Après, quand on est dans le box, c'est une seule bulle, quatre candidats, enfin quatre personnes dans une seule bulle. Et, euh, Focus sur un objectif. Ok, formidable. Donc on va, on la laisse travailler d'ailleurs. C'est elle ça. est extrêmement concentrée. Ce sont Merci. des gestes qui semblent presque répétés pendant euh, des, des semaines et des semaines. Il ouais, faut euh... que ce soit comme un ballet en fait. Il, euh, ouais. Ça se travaille. Exactement. Merci beaucoup David Tissot. Bah, on souhaite évidemment euh, beaucoup de courage à toute l'équipe de France et beaucoup de succès à Naïs Pirolet. Merci beaucoup, Vincent. This being a France with so many people around that kitchen, I don't know how I would be there focusing, but they're doing a great job. Um, now we continue with South Korea. It's their sixth time here at uh, the competition. Take a, let's take a look at their video. Vous allez pouvoir découvrir aujourd'hui une cuisine hors commun qui a harmonieusement notre identité coréenne à la gastronomie française. Nous sommes l'équipe de Corée du Sud de Bocus d'Or. Nous sommes l'équipe de Corée du Sud de Bocus d'Or.
어릴 적 은사님을 통해 처음 보키소라는 대회를 알게 되었고 싱가폴, 프랑스, 마카오에서 요리사료스에 사면 사는 동안 방향성이 잡혔을 때 도전해보고 싶다는 라 생각을 가지게 되었습니다. 이번 대회가 요리사료스의 마지막이 아닌 하나의 과정이라고 생각하고 이번 프랑스 본선에서는 지난 프렌치 베이스 세계의 한국적, 아시아적 터치를 가미하여 준비하고 있습니다. 프랑스 파리에서 페랑대학교를 나오고 프랑스에서 수년간 근무하며 체류하며 느낀 것은 제가 이 일을 사랑한다는 것입니다. 경험이 쌓이고 쌓일수록 그 마음은 점점 깊어져 갔습니다. 이번 프랑스 리옹에서 열리는 보큐즈 대회 본선에서는 프렌치 퀴즈을 향한 제 사랑과 요리에 대한 제 진정성을 담아내겠습니다. 저에게 부쿠시도로 난 요리사로서의 첫 걸음입니다. 요리사로서 정말 값진 경험인 만큼 진중하게 임하고 싶습니다. 이번 대회가 제 요리사 인생의 첫 걸음으로서 후회가 안 남도록 최선을 다하겠습니다. 저에게 부쿠시도로 난 모든 컴페티션입니다. 어느덧 부쿠시도로를 시작한 지 10년이 넘었습니다. 꼬미를 제외한 모든 포지션을 경험했고 지금까지 4명의 선수들을 서포트하고 있습니다. 어떤 분들은 보키도로를 굉장히 화려하고 선수들이 돋보일 수 있는 단편적인 부분만 보시는 분들도 많이 있습니다. 하지만 그 뒤엔 시간, 사람, 공간 등 여러 가지 도움이 필요한 경향입니다. 그런 과정이 있은 후에 선수 본인의 철학과 요리를 경연 무대에서 선보일 수 있습니다. 그렇기 때문에 보키도로는 대회 그 이상의 의미를 갖습니다. 이 South Korean team, their candidate Byung Hyang Wang, he got inspired to become a chef by fermentation cooking, which is a traditional working method widely used in South Korea. He traveled, oh, there are some fans in the house. He traveled to Singapore, Macau, and spent time in France in Michel Gerhardt's kitchen to develop his knowledge on other flavors as well, techniques as well as Western cuisine. And he says he loves to work with butter. There you see the South Korean fans. Now let's take a look at his recipe. Curious to know if he will be using butter this time. Here's a recipe. Yeah, my concept of the Fit to Kiss menu is the natural taste of the pumpkin. Because of the, we have uh, so many different kind of pumpkin, so we try to use the uh, different kind of pumpkin to give uh, different texture and then the flavor and same timing. We try to give more natural taste, and it's, and then also is uh, the tema is a fit to kiss. So we try to put the balance of the carbo and protein and the fat. So it's uh, very good for the kiss to go up. My platter concept is uh, the introduce the Korean uh, derwa. So that means is that we have a so the, uh, local product. So we try to bring from the Korea. So especially uh, we have the special uh, ingredient only have in the Korea. So we call it omija. So we I try to uh, match with the French technique, but use the Korean ingredient as well. So it uh, will be very interesting to the older judge. That's the South Korean team. And now, Angela, are you there? Or Vincent, who have you got? Oh my goodness. Okay, so we're in front of uh, kitchen number five for team South Korea. They were just checking in with the coach. If she wanted to do an interview, she has time to do an interview. Then she speaks French very, very nicely. So I'm gonna let Vincent do the interview. But we were just like here overseeing like what was happening in the kitchen and the coach for team south korea is yelling at the team and she's like going in strong and she's actually rather petite as well and so she is a force to be reckoned with so she's gonna have a bit of a chat with vincent i was going to ask her is it a problem to be a woman coach and when no. i heard when i heard her speaking i say no I'm there's no difference for you, vincent. take care in there it's okay. i'm lucky she speaks french because my korean is Worse than, <laughs> worse than ever. Uh, bonjour, Coach Slim. Bonjour. <laughs> bonjour. Oui, oui, on vous entend. C'est bon? J'avais vous... envie de vous demander uh, quelle est la différence entre être un coach homme et un coach femme? Il n'y a pas oh. de différence? Il n'y a pas de différence. <laughs> C'est pareil. Ah non, 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 il y a une différence. C'est plus fort. Les femmes sont plus <laughs> fortes. 
Girl power. <rire> comment va l'équipe ce matin Comment va le chef ben, On est en forme, on est content. Oui, content d'être là, non Oui, content hein d'être là. Pour montrer le, le travail et surtout cette, la place que prend la cuisine coréenne dans le monde aujourd'hui. Hein, C'est de... vrai. C'est euh, vraiment une, une vitrine ici pour dire aussi on a euh, une, une façon de cuisiner oui, à nous. Oui. Est-ce est qu'on va pour... voir d'ailleurs dans les recettes aujourd'hui, est-ce qu'on va voir un peu de, des produits ou des, des techniques qui sont vraiment propres à la Corée euh, Bien sûr, on utilise beaucoup de produits coréens. Euh, par exemple, là maintenant, ça, ça s'appelle Samchu. C'est un épinard coréen. Un épinard coréen Très Qui bien. grandit à côté de la mer. Ah oui, c'est a sea spinach from Korea. <laughs> huh? There's a, this this vegetable here is a, is a spinach. It's a Korean spinach. What's the name again? C'est quoi le nom? Samchu. 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 Voilà. Have you ever heard about Samchu? No, it happens here. <laughs> voilà. This is a very very peculiar spinach because it grows side to the sea. I mean, close mm. to the sea. So it's very salty. In a way. Ah, non, plus sucré. Ah, sucré au contraire. It's oh, a sweet contraire. spinach. Mm. Bon, ben, ça veut dire qu'on va avoir donc une... une là, je vois qu'il y a des, des brocolis, évidemment. Oui. Alors ça, c'est pas uniquement coréen. <rire> mais peut-être dans le choix des épices aussi, ou des aromates qu'on va mettre dans la cuisine. Euh, des aromates, des aromates. aromates. Est-ce qu'il y a des ah, épices... Ah, on euh... utilise un fruit qui s'appelle omiza. Oui. Omiza, ça veut dire o, ça veut dire 5. Mija, c'est euh, cinq goûts, en fait. Fruits qui ont cinq goûts. Ah, génial ouais. Super Et Amère, alors, je sais, que dans la... je sais que les Coréens, ils aiment bien l'ail. Hein, euh, ouais. On utilise beaucoup d'ail aime... euh, dans oui. la cuisine coréenne. Est-ce qu'on va avoir de l'ail dans les recettes Ah euh, Oui, aussi. Ah, bah, bien sûr, hein. <rire> ça c'est très important. Alors, c'est ce, qui... ce qui unit, je dirais, euh, le sud de la France et la Corée, cet ail qu'on ouais, aime bien est retrouver, aime qui est bien. un bon... Ouais. Euh... Et Un on bon aromate. Oui, bien épicé, ouais, bien, bien relevé comme ça. Merci beaucoup, Coach Lim. Je vous laisse retourner à l'équipe. Et beaucoup. allez, la Corée. Est-ce qu'il y a des Coréens ici Ah oui, avec les, les trompettes. On les a vus. Oh, Thank you. Good luck, Team South Korea. Thank you very much. And I like uh, uh, how Vincent is learning some South Korean there with that spa, uh, with the spinach. Uh, how to say spinach in uh, South Korean. Now we continue with and Estonia. Garlic, and garlic. <laughs> okay. We continue with Estonia. It's their fifth time in the final. The candidate is Alexander Gurev. He began. Let's take a look at the video first. So this is the Estonian team. Alexander began his culinary training at a very young age. He studied at Le Cordon Bleu in London and collaborated with prestigious chefs in Norway. He got the 11th place at the European selection of Bokusdor in March 2022. And Estonia is one of this year's wild cards. He was very happy about the Feed the Kids theme because he says, as a father, it's a daily challenge for him to design meals that appeal his children. Now, in Estonia, there are not many squash dishes except for pies, so they needed to be creative there to create an appetizer and a main dish. And he says, if he wasn't a chef, he would be a psychologist. Interesting. Good, well, let's take a look at the recipe Estonia is preparing for us today. Our kids' menu is based on uh, like nat natural products and uh, like natural flavors. I want to learn the kids to eat well through the 
natural taste and flavors of your dishes. A platter team is based on uh, also traditional cooking methods and uh, local products using a lot of uh, local vegetables and uh, we add our special techniques <laughs> for uh, cooking the fish and uh, uh, mussels. So this is the recipe of Estonia. Angela, Vincent, are you there? Yes, you have someone Just to talk to. Just in front. What are you doing over there, Angela? Come here, come here. <laughs> I was actually looking through a few of the files that Estonia had on the outside of their kitchen, just trying to get a clue, some insight into what we can see later on from their team. Oh, they seem very discreet, huh? There's not and, much action here compared very, to the friends. Yes, very, very <laughs> calm over here. So it's one of the kitchens that's kind of like smack, like right in the middle of the competition. So it's a very comfortable place to be in kitchen number five. Is cold five, country, six? cold hearted. We're going to meet the coach. <laughs> let's, let's, meet the, let's meet the coach. coach. Where's the coach? Where's the coach? Are you comfortable ah, speaking with is. us for a few minutes? Hello, coach. Hello. Uh, it's good to see Sonia here because uh, we have the, the feeling that you have to represent the Baltic nations here in Bukisdor. Always very good at cooking. Uh, well, of course, a fish, a fish dish is perfect for you, isn't it? Yeah, it's very, uh, very nice fish, I would say. And the scallop also, it's an uh, amazing product, so we are very happy. Uh -huh. Yes, you, you must be because uh, you feel at home when you're cooking uh, like monkfish. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> it's scallops. Uh, actually, in the recipe book, they said something very poignant, which was interesting. Estonia has been a nation by the sea. We've lived in harmony for, with the sea for years. It has been their main provider and an ally, but also a force to be reckoned with. So tell us, are you guys going to be a force to be reckoned with, with your harmony with the sea? Yes, of course. Our tray is just behind there. And it's a little bit, uh, it's very um, like sea bottom uh, inspirational. Ah, the sea bottom. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> the sea bottom, never visited it. <laughs> no, I have. It's very deep down. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, how's the chef? He's, he looks very calm. He's very calm. Uh, all of you are very calm, isn't it? Yeah, we have uh, prepared and we are trained and we are very happy to be back. Here, of course. So is it we, a, an Estonian specialty, an Estonian way of being, to be calm? Is it co a cool country? Yeah, I believe so. <laughs> good, good, good. No pressure then. <laughs> <laughs> no, just pleasure. Yes. Good. <laughs> See. <laughs> okay, back to you, Tanya. Thank Here you very it's much. very cool. <laughs> Thank you so much. Estonia there, and now I'm going to be joined by one of our destination partners, the Hungarian Tourism Agency, after a very, very short clip. Budapest, a city where you can experience a thousand years of history and culture every day. Where you can come home, where you can immerse yourself where there's so much to explore, to delight, and to amaze. Where you can take a rest, or take off on an adventure. Where you can recharge, and discover something breathtaking with every step. Look around. Unearth hidden treasures, full of details, full of surprises, full of history and life. Budapest, shaped by heritage. So there are a few wonderful images of Hungary and Budapest. I'm now joined by Sofia Jakob. She's the deputy CEO of the Hungarian Tourism Agency. Good morning and welcome. Good morning. Hi, everybody. Hi, the Hungarian team. Yes, we already presented your candidate as well. Hello to everyone 
joining from Hungary. So now, for anyone traveling to Hungary, what food would you recommend to a tourist? It's a really difficult question. We have a varied uh, ingredients, just like a paprika. Everybody knows that, but we are more than a paprika. We have a cottage cheese, we have a uh, mangalitsa, and we have some signature dishes like guyash. But I really hope that our team will tomorrow, uh, today show our special dishes. Absolutely, the paprika that you mentioned, is it like the powdered paprika and, and yeah. vegetable, right? Yeah, definitely. The powdered paprika is really, really famous. I know that one. So Hungary celebrated a few important moments in gastronomy in the past year. Can you share a few highlights? Yeah, absolutely. 2022 was really important for the Hungarian gastronomy because uh, the Michelin just uh, uh, awarded our countryside restaurants. Uh, yeah, cheer to Hungary. Uh, so we have all together. <laughs> There's a lot of fans in the house. <laughs> yeah, cheer, go Hungary. <laughs> so we have two two-star restaurants. We have a seven one-star Michelin restaurants and six Big uh, Gourmand and many, many more uh, restaurants. And not to forget that the Bokus Door European final was there in Budapest and our team just uh, awarded the second place so this is why our team is here today and uh, they can show us our really talented skills and the gastronomy uh, today so uh, go Bence, go Patrick, uh, we are cheering here for you. Wow, I can hear a lot of cheering uh, for sure, well a few highlights actually, how do these um, change the perception of international tourists coming to Hungary, all this? Yeah, it's a, it's a really important moment for Hungary and the uh, tourism uh, because uh, the, the tourists are searching more opportunities over the uh, builded heritage and the gastronomy is one of them. So we are on the map of the gastronomy already and today is here in an international uh, level that our team is, is doing a great job. So this is really important that uh, in the Central European region we are on the gastronomy map like this. Yeah, as your uh, representative of the Hungarian Tourism Agency, uh, I was wondering what role does Hungary play in the Central uh, European region? You just mentioned a little yeah. bit, but maybe there's something else to add. Yeah, actually we are a we are, uh, good partnership with the Central European region and I think we are a destination like Central Europe and we need to uh, co uh, collaborate together. This is how we are working some of our neighborhood countries with the Visegrad uh, countries. So yeah, this is uh, the destinations like Central Europe and Budapest is in the middle so we are a really important part of the Central European region and uh, yeah. Any fun facts that we need to know about Hungary that we yeah, don't know? We have many fun facts, but maybe just some of to mention. Maybe you don't know that we have over 200 thermal baths, or the Lake Balaton is the biggest lake in the Central European region, or the Havis. Uh, lake is also one of the uh, biggest uh, geothermal uh, lake. It's still active, so we have many, many uh, important places to visit to Hungary, like uh, wine regions, uh, not just Budapest. We have very important places to come and uh, deserve to visit. So if you like to take a bath in that hot water, then Hungary is for sure a destination. That's just one of the reasons to go there. Thank you very much, much uh, Sofia uh, Jakab, Jakab, for being yeah. here. Alela Hungary and hoira magyarok! And now we continue, we go on with the next uh, country, we continue with Mexico. <laughs> Mexico being here for the seventh time, let's first take a look at their video. De donde venimos? Del fuego? Las personas que nos impactaron 
podemos saber de dónde venimos y también hacia dónde vamos. ¿Quiénes somos? Esto es México. Esto es México y ahora voy a presentar el candidato de México, Marcelo Hizaki. Is a candidate for Mexico. He was born in Mexico to Japanese parents, so he knows how to mix his influences and inspirations to create new flavors. Now, being here at the Bocchi's Door is a dream of a lifetime. Since he was a child, he always wanted to represent his country, Mexico. In 2012, he won a culinary scholarship from the Turquoise Foundation and had the opportunity to learn from Joël Robuchon's brigade in Hotel de Paris, Monte Carlo, and Monaco. Now, he, is in, he and his wife, his wife, she's a chef as well, Reina Venegas, they bo both own a, a restaurant in Baja California called Amores. Yeah, I can hear some supporters for Amores as well. Then when he heard about the theme, he was very happy when it was announced. And he said it was though a challenge when he came to the scallops because the scallops in Mexico are smaller compared to the ones required in the competition. So the team had to arrive to France a bit earlier, a beginning of January, where they could train with the actual scallops. One of his plans is to create a cooking school to showcase new talent in Mexico. So this is the Mexican team. Let's take a look at the recipe. Um, the Fitz Kit menu uh, was designed uh, in a story, in a folk story Mexican, that talks about how a deity turned himself into a human to know more about Earth. And he was amazed by the beauty and the people, but amazed by all of that, He forgot to eat, so he was dying of hunger. And at that moment, a rabbit comes and offers himself as a sacrifice so he can eat it and be alive. So this deity, moved by the um, jest of this rabbit, uh, he decided instead to put a mark of him in the moon. So this story is a beautiful story about um, the beauty of being alive, about respecting nature, but more importantly, about being sharing. Uh, our platter theme is inspired in the local flavors, but the region we live at, it's right on the border with the United States, and maybe it's the most cross-border in the world. So there's a lot of immigrants there, and most of these immigrants live a small mark of their cultural identities, so it is Uh, Invited with the Mexican heritage, and we decided to represent that into our fish. So you will taste uh, Mexican flavors with the touch of different nations all over the world. This is the Mexican team, and I just saw Angela taking a sneak peek into the kitchen. So Angela, over to you. Yes, so I am in front of the kitchen. I am trying to get a closer look at some of the items that they're working on right now or to see what we're going to see coming out of the kitchen later. Um, but I do have the coach, and he's like, okay, I can, I can give you like 30 seconds or so. So, coach, tell us, what are we going to expect from Team Mexico today? Well, we expect uh, very high-level flavors. Uh, a super nice a range of the plate, a lot of flowers, color, and our Mexican culture. What, what are we going to see from your Mexican culture? What are, did you bring some specific ingredients with you or just the flavor of Latin and love? Oh, yeah, sure. We have with La Coche, that is a corn that grows uh, a kind of uh, mushroom in the cover. Mm. And we use it like a great sauce. Also, we're going to have some avocado, green tomatoes that we bring from Mexico, and for sure also uh, cacao in the way of the flower. Rosita de cacao, this is super nice. The flavor is very, very uh, delicate. It's from the cacao flower? The flower, yes, it's a oh. small flower. 
Oh, very uh, interesting. It's amazing. Is it in the feed the children or in the fish bladder? In the children. In the children in the bladder. Dessert. Okay, I'm looking forward to that. And you said the corn that has the fungus that grows on top of it, is that in the feed the children or in the fish? That's in the fish. Okay. It's the sauce. It's part of the sauce. Okay, thank you so much, Coach. Thank, thank you. you for sharing with us part of your culture and history. We're looking forward to seeing that coming out of kitchen number seven here for Team Mexico. Wow, great. Thank you so much, Angela. Mexico in la casa. Uh, good luck uh, to you. Now, here in the studio, I am actually joined uh, by a guest. I'm joined by the winner of Box Door 2019 and now jury member Kenneth Tuff Hansen from Denmark. I can still hear the Mexican fans. <laughs> and now here in the studio, Kenneth Tuff Hansen of uh, Denmark. So, you know that feeling, you know how loud it can get as you won in 2019. Can you tell us a little bit how this adventure, going through Bocchi's door, allowed yourself to get to know yourself better? Uh, yeah, it's, um, it's a huge journey just to compete in uh, Bocchi's door. And um, for me, the, you know, to, to make the presentation to make yourself ready for the competition. That's probably the biggest journey. And today it's, um, it's uh, the huge final, but it's also very important that re they remember to have some fun in there um, because it, they will make better food. Absolutely. Now, uh, we are seeing, of course, we're talking a lot about techniques, about the food, but these are human beings there in yeah. the box. There are people. Uh, can you describe the person you are in the kitchen as a chef? Yeah, um, today it's uh, to be in the Bucu store final is a different world than being in the normal kitchen because of the pressure they're on today. Um, so they are extremely focused. But then again, they know all the small details that they have to do. So I think everybody has uh, some small places where they think this can go wrong, this can go wrong. And as the hours go, after hour one, after hour two, and so on. Then they, they make those small green aligners and they said, okay, everything is going great. Um, so it's very focused and, um, and very uh, fast working. And, and of course, uh, they are living their dream right now. And uh, so was I, and um, it's a wonderful feeling. Mm -hmm. And now you need a lot of skills uh, and also mental strength. How does this adventure here help you for other areas in your life? Um, I think uh, when you do the Bukui store, it's such a huge task. So um, you know yourself even better afterwards because you will be put in some dark, dark spaces. I think I was um, how to figure out how to manage to do the huge task that it is. And after that, uh, you have to um, be creative and uh, uh, find a uh, smart solution and uh, by the end of the day uh, cook the, the best meal of your life. So would you say that uh, when you're in a tricky situation in your life you sometimes you find a quick solution because you're just used to it? Yeah, I think um, and uh, there's always the creative perspective but um, when I was competing in 2019, we had to do a chartreuse, which is uh, not very common to do, but we had to figure out a way where we could cook one and serve it hot and juicy. Um, and in that weird sense, uh, find a way that, that uh, you were able to, to, to solve that task, so yeah. Mm -hmm. And now, uh, going through Boku's door, uh, what connections have you made here? Uh, connections all over the world. Um, yeah, US, Australia, New Zealand, uh, everywhere you make, uh, of course, France, Hungary, uh, this all countries. So uh, yeah, it's uh, uh, opening the world to you. So you've traveled to many of the places and, and visited many kitchens. Yeah, yeah, uh, a lot of traveling and um, yeah, it's wonderful. Great. Well, Kenneth, thank you very much for sharing your you're perspective. Welcome. And uh, you're part of the jury, uh, so I guess you have some work to do. There will be a lot of eating.
<laughs> I hope you're skipping lunch, though. Someone has to do the hard job, so yeah. <laughs> good, good. Thank you very much, and uh, we'll see you later. Thank you. Thank you. And we continue with the next country, which is Australia. Let's take a look at their video. Everybody thinks cooking is just about being a chef, but it's so much more testing, practicing, refining, till it gets to the point that we're happy with it. My name's Alex McIntosh, and I work at Southwest Brewery in Torquay. My approach to cooking is very simplistic. I've been lucky enough to work in lots of different places where I get to take lots of different approaches. I like to always challenge myself and do something new and learn and develop all while showcasing really good quality produce from the area that I'm working in. The journey for the Boku store for me has been a long one. This year, I have privileged enough to win the national cook-off. It took a while to sink in. Now I have the honor of representing Australia. It's the whole experience to challenge myself and to inspire my kids to show them that if there's something that you want to do, if you put in the hard work and the effort, you will get there. This Team Australia with some fans there. It's been 17 times that Australia made it to the finals. Alex McIntosh, the candidate there, you saw him in the video. He grew up in Canada and settled in Australia in 2006. Now, on his 14th birthday, he was taken to a French restaurant for the very first time, and there he was amazed by the art and skill involved in not only the cooking, but also the serving. In 2021, he had to withdraw from the competition because of COVID, so even more happy now to be here. Alex McIntosh is involved in raising funds to finance Australia's participation so he's active on that front as well. When it comes to the themes of today's dishes, he was very happy about the monkfish theme, as it's a fish he likes to eat, <laughs> as well as to work with. However, in Australia, it's not so easy to find it, it's, as it's hard to import it. Then, when it comes to the squash dish, he thought it was a surprise. He likes it, especially for dessert. Now, we're curious to see what they will be Cooking today, let's take a look at the recipe. For our Feed the Kids menu, we really wanted to focus on the location that we're in in Australia and down on the coast and showcasing a lot of those ingredients. Plus having two kids of my own, it's been really fun to create really playful, exciting, nutritious dishes that they enjoy and hopefully everyone at the Boku store will enjoy as well. The theme for the platter is to, to showcase the Great Ocean Road in Victoria. And it is about the ocean where the land meets the sea and the erosion of the coast and, and all the things that are happening in our area. And this is Australia's recipe. Vincent, Angela, are you there? What have you got for us? So yes, we are here right in front of the kitchen for Team Australia. And as we were looking at in the video that Australia, that the chef from Australia, Alex, likes to use products that are from his region and from the area that he's actually cooking in. So we're hoping that maybe Australia brought with them some products that we don't get to see in this side of the world or that are only native to the area. And so now we're with Coach Dan. Now, Dan, tell us what's happening in the kitchen. What, what have you guys brought that maybe we're not familiar with? Uh, Alex, Alex is from the south of Australia, which is where we have the Great Ocean Road. We have the Twelve Apostles. And the story we wanted to tell today is that the coast and the coastal region in that part of Australia is not like any other part of Australia. It's not tropical. It's not like uh, the hot desert that we know about. Mm -hmm. It's really a, an area where there's a lot of beautiful beach succulents and things like that. Oh, interesting. So are those edible succulents? That's correct. So we're going to be using some of those today through our monkfish. And we're also going to introduce a little bit of them through the sauce later on. And are those edible succulents used fresh or cooked? Some of them are used fresh. Today we're going to be using them slightly marinated and fresh as well. Mm -hmm. uh, there are other types that are used cooked. We haven't brought any of those for this this time. Okay. 
And then, so now, what else are we going to see on your fish or feed the children theme? Uh, feed, feed the children. Alex has got a, a couple of young children who couldn't make the, the long, long trip from Australia. But uh, it, it was easy for him to sort of come up with the ideas of what his kids don't like to eat. And that's what, <laughs> what I think all kids, uh, the hardest thing is to, to try and give them something that they don't want to eat. They look at it and then they go, no, no, I don't want that. And then having kids myself, I know you... That's the biggest battle that you've got. So for Alex, it was just thinking about, oh, what would my kids not like to eat? And what would I want them to eat? And how am I going to get them to eat it? Mm -hmm. And so what are some of those secrets to feeding your children or feeding Alex's I, children? I, I think disguising food a little bit so they don't know what it is. Uh, no, we, we've got a... Pumpkins are a very interesting ingredient. It's probably one of the, the ones that's easiest to get them to eat because the colour's not off-putting to them. Yes. So we're trying to bring in a couple of elements, a little bit of broccoli, things like that. Uh, which hopefully we can get the kids to like. And pumpkin is quite sweet. So I know that children like to eat sweet things. You can always put it in things and famously known as pumpkin pie. And I think that's where maybe today's dessert will be a little bit difficult because people might want to go sweet because it's, you know, it is for children. That's how we're going to get them to eat it. But it, it, with this competition, I don't think we could go too sweet. Either. So find a good balance. That's been the hardest thing. But uh, definitely the pumpkin, with Alex being from Canada originally, uh, being born in Canada, growing up there, he was aware of, you know, pumpkin pie and things like that. It was just next door. <laughs> yes. I was wondering about something. Um, what kind of fish is close to monkfish in uh, your seas around Australia? We I have mean, the, the flesh. The, probably the we have the, the monkfish, which is from New Zealand, which is just across the, uh, the ditch, as we call it. Uh, that's the closest to a, a northern European monkfish, but it was still not able for us to be able to train with it. We still had to, uh, to fly some over from, uh, uh -huh. from Norway and, and whatnot, mm -hmm. so yeah, that, that's probably the closest. We also got a flathead, which is a similar shape and structure of fish, uh -huh. but it's, it's a very different flavour, very different uh, style uh -huh. of cooking for that fish. Mm -hmm. And the, the, the southerner scallops are different too, I mean, the, what you find in the Pacific Ocean. Absolutely. And, and even from the north of Queensland, north of Australia, where I'm from, we have tiny, sweet, succulent scallops, which yeah. are completely different to Atlantic scallops. So that also has been a bit of a challenge trying to work out how we're going to adapt to that. And you know, that's one of the things we had to get over once we got over to France as well. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay. And the import laws in Australia are so strict, so it's very difficult to get a lot of these products. It is, and it's even difficult nowadays to get products from one side of Australia to the other. It's, uh, and, and there's such a vast variety of products from those two sides. And it's, it's just the same as really as trying to get something in from Europe, I suppose. No, really. Uh, well, let's remind people that uh, Australia is a land of uh, great wines, too, that goes so well with your gourmet food. Don't, don't say that and in crocodiles. France. Let's, let's just not. <laughs> let's just not. Let's it's just... too early in the morning. <laughs> no, let, let, let's talk about Australian food, but we won't talk about Australian wine right now. <laughs> okay, thank you, Team Australia. We're looking forward to seeing your platters yeah, later on Thanks today. Very much. Great. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Now we continue with another island, Iceland. And let's take a look at their video. Iceland, a land known for its beautiful nature and harsh environment. I have always felt my environment has shaped me as a person. As I get older, I find myself looking more to my roots and how I grew up. My dedication and inspiration comes through my connection with nature and I can't wait to bring a little bit of Iceland's flavor with me to Leon. This is Team Iceland. See you in Leon. This, uh, the Iceland fans, it's their 13th time here at Bokis Door. They've been on the podium two times. Now this year the candidate is Sigurion Bragi Gerson, who is competing here with his team. He's Iceland's Chef of the Year of 2019. Now Sigurion loves to travel and is always on the outlook for new culinary trends, savors and inspirations, but he remains attached to his native land from which he draws most of his inspiration. He was very happy about the monkfish theme as seafood is in the DNA of his cuisine and his country. 
but he was surprised about the Feed the Kids theme. It took some time to get used to that uh, squash dished theme, but as a father of two children, he saw it as an opportunity to offer something fun. Now, if he's not in the kitchen, then you find him at the riverbank fly fishing. This, the team of Iceland, let's take a look at the recipe. Uh, my inspiration I drew from, I have three kids myself, so I try to use their imagination for the theme of the kids. Uh, my platter theme comes from my grandma. She lived in a small fishing village in Iceland and uh, all the ingredients from the platter comes from uh, that village. So I'm really proud of introducing that to for the judges. So this is the team of Iceland and now over to you, Angela and Vincent in the room. So we're here in front of the kitchen for Team Iceland and actually it's gotten a little bit loud in the stands. So I couldn't Extremely hear a loud. lot about the recipe. So now I have the coach with me here. Now coach, tell me, what can we expect from your team today? So of course, like you know, uh, we are quite used to uh, cooking seafood all the time. Mm -hmm. A lot of uh, seafood and coastlines in Iceland. So the monkfish comes quite naturally to us, I think. Oh, fantastic. Okay, so that's like home team advantage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What can we expect from your platter then? From the platter? Yes. Uh, so we have like a silver designers, and we try to design the platter like so it will be coming natural like a seaweed, like an Icelandic coast. Oh, pretty. Yes. But it's quite minimalistic at the same time. Okay, and so what else for the children's theme then? How are you guys working with the pumpkin? So, Sirion, the candidate, mm -hmm. he's actually a father of three. Okay. So I know that he was uh, really excited about the kids' theme, Fit the Kids. Uh, and he actually, I think it came for the whole family, so he used his kids as well to try out his plates. Yes, put him to good work already. That's fantastic. And so that's good. I, we've been hearing from a few of the other teams that they were excited about the children's theme. Yeah, exactly. So that's great. Yeah. And we have a lot of different kinds of shapes for the different plates. So. Uh, that's an interesting advantage to have. I think a lot of the chefs do have children. They've taken time out of very busy careers in order to actually have a bit more in their personal yeah, lives. Bring the family together to yes. enjoy the hard training. Okay, well, thank you so much, Coach. We're looking forward to seeing everything that's coming out of your kitchen. In the back of your kitchen, very, very nice. I can see how you're saying minimalist. Looking forward to seeing that beautiful stuff on your platter later on. Perfect. Thank Good you so luck. Much. We're really excited. Thank you very much. Uh, now we have three more countries to go. But first, we're going to take a five-minute ad break before we continue with the next countries. A five-minute ad break. See you in a few minutes.
Bread is at the heart of life, all over the world. It's part of our cultural heritage, and every country has its own lively and unique bakery culture that gets passed down from generation to generation. Supporting and sharing bakery cultures worldwide. That's Bridor's mission. Bridor, share the bakery cultures of the world. We know what you're made of. The passion that drives you. We love your creativity, energy, taste, commitment, and teamwork. We're back together. And San Pellegrino is honored to stand by you. Wherever you are now, wherever your journey takes you, always supporting your talent. San Pellegrino supports restaurants. And I'm joined by uh, Guy Boeuf, CEO of uh, Braga, one of our main partners. But first, let's take a very quick look at uh, their video, at their advertisements. CEO of Braga here in the studio. They, of course, are the manufacturer of uh, the chef's uniforms that you can see here. Bonjour, Guy. Bonjour. <laughs> Bonjour, Tania. <laughs> Alors, euh, j'ai dit que les vestes euh, uniformes, euh, c'est euh, signature de Braga. Euh, alors, there's something new, actually. Uh, the, la veste Grand Chef has been registered as a brand since August 2022. La veste Grand Chef est une marque déposée euh, depuis août. Euh, vous pouvez parler un petit peu sur ça Oui, la, la veste iconique de, de Braga, connue à travers le monde, portée par tous les grands chefs dans, dans le monde. Elle est unique. Il restait quelque chose à faire, c'est qu'elle soit déposée. C'est devenu un modèle déposé, c'est-à-dire que les éléments de copie ou d'imitation ne sont plus de mise. Et clairement, aujourd'hui, c'est un événement majeur. C'est aussi une reconnaissance officielle pour cette veste qui date de l'amitié de Bragard avec M. Paul, avec Paul Bocuse. So he was saying that uh, this uh, West, this uh, shirt is of course iconic 
uh, and known for a very long time. What was missing that the brand that this um, shirt is being registered as a as a brand and you're not allowed to copy their details. Um, alors, c'est nouveau que la marque est déposée. C'est aussi nouveau. Vous avez un site euh, internet nouveau. Alors, je suis désolé. J'espère que je vais répondre à votre question. Mais l'enthousiasme qui est ici est tellement extraordinaire que le niveau sonore est intense. Non, à côté des, des, des gammes institutionnelles de Bragard, euh, excellentes, qui rendent nos clients euh, élégants en plus, parce qu'ils sont excellents dans leur métier, on a développé des nouveaux produits, des nouvelles vestes, avec des matières innovantes, respirantes, et par ailleurs euh, des gammes plus nouvelles pour les chefs plus jeunes, plus urbains. Et c'est toute une gamme qui s'appelle Studio B. Et je, je vous invite à la, à la, à la, à la voir. D'ailleurs, si je ne me trompe pas, la veste que vous portez est une veste Studio B. Et vous êtes remarquablement élégante. Ah oh oui, merci beaucoup. Je crois, pour la coupe de la pâtisserie, j'ai une veste de Studio B, je crois. Absolument. Les, ça. Elle a été conçue avec un certain nombre de chefs parce que nos vestes, on les crée, on les invente avec notre bureau de style, mais toujours avec un chef et une chef qui nous donnent leur feedback, leurs inputs, input, et puis qui, qui la portent. Et il y a des vestes chez nous qui portent le nom de grand chef. So uh, he was just saying that uh, Braga has a new line for younger chefs called a Studio B. Uh, it's uh, elegant and it has some uh, nice details, so a new design that you can also find on their booth here at Sierra Leone if you want to take a look at that. And I, I was actually wearing it for the patisserie Coupe du Monde. Now, um, Chef Works, uh, il, um, Produit aussi, il produit aussi fait des chefs uniformes, ils ont des um, investissements in you, in Braga. Oui. C'est une, une nouveauté pour nous euh, sur le SIRA, puisque nous avons nos marques classiques Braga, nous avons, je vous viens de vous le dire, Studio B, et on lance la distribution de chefs Fox en Europe, en particulier sur la France, sur la Suisse et sur l'Italie. Ce sont chefs Fox, pour ceux qui ne connaissent pas encore, et le leader aux États-Unis de toute la, que je veux dire, la restauration, l'hôtellerie d'entrée de, entrée, milieu de gamme. Et Bragard maintenant sera aux états unis il l'était déjà, mais il sera aujourd'hui renforcé par cette démarche. Et en Europe, ce sera chez Fox qui, qui sera parmi notre catalogue, parmi toutes les offres de Bragard. Super. Uh, so, uh, Bragard... Uh, has uh, chef works that also uh, does chef's uniforms and also uniforms for the gastronomy and hospitality sector invested into Braga and, and now uh, the chef works uniforms are being distributed in Europe sp specifically in France, Italy and Switzerland by Braga and the other way around also Braga has a bigger visibility through this uh, partnership with chef works. Guy Boeuf, merci beaucoup. Merci beaucoup pour cette euh, partnership ici. C'est moi qui vous remercie. Et de nouveau, je vous renouvelle mon compliment. Vous êtes habillé avec élégance. Et c'est <rire> un peu grâce à Bragar. <rire> merci beaucoup, Guy Boeuf. À merci. So now we continue with our um, few left countries. So we continue with the USA. Let's take a look at their video portrait. So this is the USA and so many fans are in the house cheering for the United States of America. It's their 18th time here at the finals. You see the candidate there, Jeffrey Hayashi. Jeffrey Hayashi. The USA has been on the podium two times before. Now Jeffrey himself, he was born in Honolulu in Hawaii. And he first studied architecture, and then his passion for style and precision led him to discover cooking. So he left architecture for an apprenticeship with chef and chocolatier 
Philip Padovani in Hawaii. In 2014, he was the inaugural executive sous chef at Murat in San Francisco, a restaurant which received a Michelin star in its very first year of operation. Now, Jeffrey's favorite ingredient to work with is fish, so I guess he must be very happy about the theme today. Let's take a look at uh, the USA's recipes. For Feed the Kids, we took inspiration from childhood fairy tales. Cinderella's pumpkin, Goose and the Golden Egg, and Snow White's Mirror Mirror. Our platter, we look to Hawaii. We look at the rivers and mountains, the waterfalls, all those beautiful shapes that help create and elevate our monkfish. Jeffrey explaining his recipes. Now over to Angela and Vincent. Thanks, Tanya. I can't hear a thing anymore here on stage. The audience is just going bonkers. You can see all of the kitchens have started their day. So I'm here in front of Team USA's kitchen, and the coach is super busy, the team is super busy, but I've managed, because they've brought a lot of supporters with them, but I've managed to find the winner from Team USA who competed here on stage at the Baku's door in 2017 and has been the only American candidate ever to take home gold. So Matthew, how are you doing today? Uh, this is fantastic. I mean, it's good to be back here in Lyon. I know we weren't able to make it in 2021, yeah. uh, but we're back again and very excited for Jeffrey this year. So how does it feel like to be in this atmosphere? You know, the energy in here, you can feel it in your skin, you can feel it in your whole system. How I mean, are you it, feeling now on this side of the box? Well, it's, it's a relief to be on this side. Um, I know the pressure that kind of goes into it, the training, these guys are well equipped to what they're doing right now. So, you know, I'm excited for them, but it's much more enjoyable to be on this side. Exactly, and since you have some time to speak because you are on this side, how was your training in order to stand on the podium and get gold? What is the time and energy that you put into training to get to that point? Well, it, it, it takes years and it takes a team, right? And I mean, there's a foundation of individuals that come forward. All the past winners gave us the tools and the experience to bring to the table. So we're doing the same thing for Jeffrey this year. It's nice to have a mentorship program. Right. So speaking of the mentorship program, it's something that you guys started in the U.S. in order to get to Lyon. Tell us more about that program. Yeah, so the foundation was created uh, multiple from, you know, from Thomas Keller to um, Daniel Balloud uh, and, and numerous others to go down through. And we've got many of those supporters here, but without that foundation, it gives us, you know, the infrastructure to do and allow us to do what we do. Um, so we're very thankful to have that foundation. The mentorship of all the chefs that are incorporated throughout the United States um, has given us you know, the, the experience that we need to, to, to really perform at a high level here. I really love that, and I think that that's so important because you really do build on the shoulders of the giants that came before you, and you need to be able to pass that on to the younger generations right. that are coming up and looking at us, you know, with such stars in their eyes. They're like, wow, you know, maybe one day I can compete on that level too. No, we're excited. So go Team USA. <laughs> okay, thank you so much. Okay, Team USA, looking forward to seeing what you're producing later on this afternoon. Thank you very much, Angela. So this is uh, the team of the United States. Uh, let's uh, continue with Finland uh, and let's take a look at their video.
So this is the team of Finland and the Finnish fans there. Hey, Finland. It's their 16th time here at Bokus Door. The candidate of Finland, Johan Kurkella, is one of the youngest in the competition. Uh, the team is also the youngest. The whole team is also very young. So jo Johan is 25 years old and he worked in many renowned establishment including Michelin star restaurant Olo and Grön in Helsinki. Now the team, uh, Johan and his commies, have been training underground for 10 hours per day without seeing any light to prepare for Bocchus Dor. It uh, was also a good way to create a great connection between them. And Johan was first uh, a bit uh, nervous when he realized that we, he was going to come to the finals, didn't know he, if he was ready, but then realized that he has been training for eight years for this contest without even knowing it. Now, if he wasn't a chef, he would be an artist, he says, but I would say if you made it to Bokis Door, you're an artist anyway, you're an artist in the kitchen. Now, with that, let's take a look at their recipe. Our Fit the Kids menu is a mix of playful and elegance with flavors from around the world. Our platter theme is a homage to classic Finnish cooking methods. And that's it. Angela, over to you. Ah, uh, thank you. Sorry, I couldn't hear a thing at all. Look at this. This is so interesting. So when you see here, this is what the team has brought with them. And this is what they call glow frying. So I'm here with the coach. Coach, you have a minute to speak to me. What is glow frying? Tell me more about that. Uh, it's a very traditional way of uh, cooking in Finland, especially in the uh, winter time with the uh, fish. So basically we uh, cook the uh, fish and uh, close up close to the fire, so it gets like a tender cooking, but still the smokiness and a bit of the charcoal flavor from the bonfire. So have you brought with you a thing to actually cook the monkfish, like gently like that here? And I'm more like an inspiration to our, to inspiration our way of cooking, so we try to create it. the same flavors without the bonfire in here, kitchen. No, that would, and it would be so inconsistent. So if you want to have everything consistent for you today, as I can see that all of your timers are set, and so consistency is definitely the key. What else can we expect from your team? What about the Feed the Children menu? Uh, we try to uh, get some uh, playful and fresh ideas for the, the, how we would see that children would enjoy and uh, have a bit of uh, surprises here and there. Oh, okay. I think a bit of a surprise is always a good thing, especially for the Feed the Children menu, because it's the first time that we've seen it for the Buku store. Yeah. It was a challenge, but it was a nice challenge. Everything is a challenge. <laughs> yeah, that's what this is all about. Okay, thank you so much, Coach. We're looking forward to seeing everything that's coming out of the kitchen. For Team Finland, good luck. Yeah, thanks. Thank you very much, Angela. And we're almost done with presenting uh, all the teams. One country left. It's a uh, first timer here at Bocchus Adore. It's Mauritius. Let's take a look at Mauritius.
So here a few fans for Mauritius as well in the crowd with their colorful flags and this premiere at the Bocus d'Or. <laughs> now let me present you the candidate of Mauritius, Kritesh Halkori is his name. He won the Bocus d'Or Africa. Kritesh is a chef at the Intercontinental Resort in Mauritius. Now, actually, it was complicated for him and his commies to manage training sessions since uh, the topics have been announced uh, uh, around uh, November last year, as December and January are tourist months in Mauritius. So they met once or twice a week in real conditions with monkfish. But when it came to the squash menu, it was even harder as they don't have any squash in Mauritius. Now, Komi Brady Chong was actually responsible to develop the first draft of the recipes as his time was entirely devoted to Bokis Dorp. And Kritesh says, therefore, without his commie, Brady Chong, he would never have reached Leon. It's all about teamwork. Now, let's take a look at these recipes. So, as we know that uh, the, ch the chai are very curious, we team Mauritius has made uh, something different, some uh, types of colorful on the plate, uh, some types of logo, just to attract the children to eat and uh, to have the uh, curiosity to eat every day the, the vegetable food, as they don't use to eat vegetable, as they don't know what is this. So our platter, Team Mauritius represent uh, the, the sea, as you see the sun uh, all around, there's uh, some uh, crops around, and we used to make a brunoise of uh, vegetable to go around the mock fish, and some uh, sauce with uh, coconut, as there is coconut tree all around our sea, so we try to mix all together the fish and the coconut also. This Mauritius uh, there, Ange Angela and Vincent, over to you in the room. Okay, so we're here in front of kitchen at number 12. Wow, it's so exciting to have you guys here this year. Thank you, thank you. And your team actually won for the African Cup, is that correct? Yes, first uh, time we participate and we won Africa, yeah, we were very lucky. I'm feeling super good about this. Now, tell me more. What are we going to expect from Team Mauritius here? Uh, you can expect tropical flavors. Okay. It's going to be that, um, uh, yeah, uh, we are going to use a lot of uh, coconut, turmeric, and some uh, curiosity from Mauritius, like the baton morum. The which what? Is a baton morum, uh, morgam in uh, English. I don't really know the name. Uh, the one we saw on camera just before, uh -huh. over there, okay. boarding. Uh -huh. uh, it's like it's a kind of uh, bean growing up on trees. We eat the leaf, we eat the, the bean, uh, it's very interesting, yeah. Oh, it's very special. And yeah. So these are some of the ingredients that you brought with us from your country. Yes. And then even in the winter, here in Lyon, it's very, very cold. We're going to feel some tropicalness in the plates. Oh yeah, it was very challenging for us. We come from summertime, 30 degrees over there. Mm -hmm. Arrived there, was zero. Uh, so we had to acclimate for the food, but also for the men. Yes. It was very, very difficult. Yeah, so uh, we train. We train many days before coming uh, coming to Lyon. Mm -hmm. We stopped over, and uh, yeah, yeah, it, it took time actually. Yeah. yeah. Yes, I'm sure it did. I'm super excited for that, and Thank you. I'm, I'm very excited to see what your team is going to do. Welcome to the Bakuz door, like Thanks. first time Thanks here. Good luck, team. Great. Thanks a lot. Thank you very much, Angela. Good luck. First timers here at Bocuse d'Or Mauritius. Now, these were all of the th teams uh, competing today here at Bocuse d'Or, the final day of this competition. You see the clock is ticking for the teams right here, how much time they have left for their first and their second uh, plate, feed the kids and the monkfish uh, dish. I can see the first team has about two hours to go and then we will start with the tasting after that. Now, we want to show you a few images of the preparation. So we leave you with uh, that. Uh, we give you a bit of air to just see how the teams are doing right now in the kitchens.
Cuando eso marche, vamos a formar la popiet. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go.
So here at Bocuse Door, the chefs are not just competing for the Bocuse Door, but also there's a social commitment award which has been launched now uh, for the second uh, time. And I'm joined by Laura Hayes. She is a member of uh, that social commitment award jury. She is also a part of the NGO World Central Kitchen. Then next to her, Catherine Guerin. She is responsible for the Bocuse Door Winners Association. We're here to talk about the Social Commitment Awards. Welcome to both of you. Thank you. Thank you. So, um, Catherine, maybe you can go ahead and explain a little bit what's the idea behind this uh, Social Commitment Award. The idea is we know that chefs are not only chefs, they don't only cook, but they are human beings who care for the world they are in and who are pretty much aware of the importance of food. And we wanted uh, for this competition uh, to give them the opportunity to show that they are involved uh, in their community, in their country, to help solve problems related to food. And then, uh problems related to food. Can you solve problems through food, Laura? 100%. Food is an incredible, powerful tool for change. It can bring hope, it can bring joy, it can bring people together. The team from France, for example, um, they brought together people experiencing loneliness for meals, uh, which has a lasting impression. Uh, one of the things we look for in the candidates is that um, their projects will have short-term and long-term effects. Um, and we had such strong competitors from around the world. So how does it exactly work? Uh, did the competitors had to present the project and then based on what criteria are you choosing, Catherine? Yeah, they have to apply, uh, send a project, a file describing uh, a project they have either uh, run themselves or if they don't have time or want to support a special organization which works well, they can simply say we want to support this of that organization. And the criteria for the jury are uh, then, um, of course, uh, how much the teams have been involved, uh, also the impact of their action, which is very uh, important. Is it short term or is it long term uh, impact? And uh, well, um, also the criteria on how they could evaluate this impact and how they could present it. Uh, present the, the file uh, in itself. And what exactly will the winner uh, receive? Oh, the winner will receive uh, first uh, the, the, the happiness of uh, winning something uh, which is very important because it's a way to, to show the care. And also a prize uh, money, uh, 7,000 euros, which are given by uh, the sponsor of this prize, which is Green Care. And then with this uh, money, uh, they do what they want. And last time, the first winner, which was Colombia, used this money in a very beautiful manner to help a young uh, girl to study abroad. Uh, this young girl was involved in the project Coca no Cocaina in Colombia. And she is willing to go on helping her country and her community. And uh, so they gave the team, Colombia gave this award, this money to, to her. Well, I'm getting goosebumps by hearing uh, that. Uh, Laura, you're a member of the jury, which consists of five members. Uh, from your perspective, um, you know, how hard is it to choose and, and, and how is it to, to see it from your perspective? It was very hard to choose. As you can imagine, um, chefs have broad talents, which they applied in many ways, from making sure ingredients in their country reach more people to um, solving some of the problems that we mentioned. Uh, it was all very impressive, and we hope that with each year the Social Commitment Award grows, and we hope that more teams will apply. Um, again, food is just uh, such a powerful change agent. You, you, one of the uh, the representatives of the jury of five uh, from an NGO. Who else sits on this jury? What background do they have? 
We, we try to have a, a varied jury, so you will find a chef who is uh, very much involved in, uh, in, our, in actions to solve problems uh, in our society and uh, uh, for sustainable development. Uh, we have a politician who is also very uh, involved in these uh, matters. Uh, and we also have uh, uh, someone from the, the European Food Bank uh, federation and so we try to have a varied uh, jury not only consisting of chefs we have only one chef who is Nadia Samut but um, people who have a, um, a good experience of these matters so that we have a serious reliable uh, jury to, to judge uh, these cases so making sure that there's expertise exactly. in that yeah. field. Now, maybe one more question. You mentioned one of the, the, the actions that they're taking, like France fighting loneliness. What else um, are these candidates uh, doing? Sure. Um, Team Mexico, for example, has been very active at the border of, of US and Mexico, where there are many refugees gathering. And so they are providing um, hot, nourishing meals um, that can really uh, just bring a, a moment of normalcy to people. Um, we have, again, Team Colombia working with indigenous communities in their country and um, helping them get ingredients into the best restaurants in Colombia and around the world. Um, so many different uh, countries from around the world um, had genius ideas to support their communities. Great. Well, thank you very much. I'm looking forward to seeing who will win uh, that prize. Uh, Laura and Catherine, merci beaucoup. Merci. merci beaucoup. Thank you. Thank you very much. And now we will actually meet them later on, of course, uh, for the degustation, for the tasting. But for now, we leave you with a few more images. can see again the clock is ticking and while our chefs are preparing working on their menus we are going to take a lunch break we will be back for you at 12 30 then for the start of the tasting so we're taking a lunch break until 12 30 we'll leave you with a few more images and we see you later have a good meal bon appetit